Well, good day to you all. Today's offering is something a little different. It's something I have never seen before. It has the form factor of a transistor radio. All the markings are in traditional Chinese. It has an LED. A speaker grill. One-off switch with integrated volume control. Headphone, socket, and a 3 volt DC power jack. It is not a radio, but it is a Buddhist chant box. This device is powered by two AA batteries, so it runs off 3 volts obviously. And this particular unit belonged to a late family member. I don't think it was ever used because it's in uh, very nice condition. So what we'll do today is figure out what all this Chinese means, have a listen to it, and then look inside and see what makes this rather unique and special device work. Finally, I'll address the moral dilemma that I'm facing. Should I leave this intact as a, an instrument of religious practice or should it be repurposed for something that perhaps I can use such as an audio signal tracer or something like that. Anyway, let's get started. The chant you're listening to is produced by the unit. In English, this chant is called, and excuse my pronunciation, Namo Amitabha, which apparently translates to I devote myself to Buddha or I pay homage to Buddha. I'm not 100% sure about this translation, so if you know a better translation, please let me know in the comments. The chant loops every 15 seconds or so. The unit draws about 20 milliamps at one third volume, which is already quite loud. With the volume turned all the way up, the unit draws over 100 milliamps. So let's pull this little guy apart. The foam here in the battery compartment is still in very good condition, so perhaps not that old. Maybe from the early 2000s even. Who knows? This stuff usually perishes after a couple of decades, but uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad. The unit's held together by four screws. Four screws are out. Let's remove the back cover. This very much reminds me of a typical pocket transistor radio with the PCB cut out to accommodate the speaker. The only thing lacking is a tuning capacitor and it's probably the only thing that distinguishes it from a pocket radio. Flipping the board over reveals only a minimal number of components on this single sided board. As you can see mostly capacitors. There's a dual in line IC. And in the bottom right hand corner on a smaller PCB mounted at right angles to the main board is a small blob or system on a chip. Presumably this contains the recording of the chant. The only clue I can see to the age of this device is the code stamped on the audio amplifier chip. The chip is a KA2209 made by Samsung stamped with the code 514. This could be the 51st week of 1994, or possibly even the 14th week of 1995. If you happen to know, please let me know below. Presented here is the basic schematic of the chant box. I've included only the section that's relevant to the audio signal. We start with the 3.5mm socket, which is switched, so when no external speaker is plugged in, 
the internal speaker is active. This speaker is driven by the amplifier here and the amplifier is configured in bridge mode. So each side of the amplifier is connected to one side of the speaker and the outputs complement each other. That is when one goes positive the other goes negative and vice versa. This string of components here is part of the configuration for the bridge mode operation of this amplifier chip. The recording of the chants is located on this SOC module. This module has four pins, two power pins, one positive, one negative. Another pin here which is connected to the supply voltage through this 140k resistor. When I placed my finger across this resistor I found it changed the timing of this chip. So the pitch and the duration of the chance changed. The third pin here is the output. The output's fed into this low pass filter and then into the volume control. After the volume control there's some more AC bypassing here and then coupling here where the signal is then fed directly into the amplifier. Finally, as promised, translations of the labeling of this unit. On the front, we have Namo Amitabha. And on the back, we have some spiritual advice. And at the top, most importantly, it says not for sale. I suspect this was distributed without charge by a local Buddhist organization, probably to followers of Buddhism in order for them to pursue their religious practice. Wrapping up, given that this unit was not for sale, I think it would be wrong to repurpose it. So what I'll do is track down a local Buddhist organization, hand this in to them, and they can pass it on to a local Buddhist who can use it for their religious purposes. That's probably the best use for this device. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's certainly been a lot of fun looking at this very unusual device. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and have a terrific day.